Amazon packaging. So in this video, I'm going to go over the specific things that you need to have, the specific Amazon requirements for packages that you're getting created from your manufacturer and getting sent to Amazon. And when we're getting sent to Amazon, there are specific things that you have to have on your Amazon packages if you want them to ever even get past customs from China to US, they're going from border to border. So customs is the middleman and there are specific things I'm going to show you guys in a minute exactly what you have to have on your product if you wanted to get past customs. And more importantly, how do we even get packaging? I'm going to cover all of this in this video, the specific packaging requirements, how to get packages and how to get it across the border and get past customs. So if you're excited for that, hit the like button and stay tuned for the video. Now, once again, I'm going to break this down into three easy steps. And the very first step is the actual requirements that Amazon FBA requires you to have your packaging under. All right, guys, so we're on Amazon Seller Central and the specific packaging and prep requirements that you need and that you have to have for your specific items you're sending into Amazon. These are the specific requirements. Now, with that being said, how do we get here? If we come to Google and type in Amazon packaging and prep requirements, just search that in really quick, scroll down, the sellercentral.amazon.com, click on that link, and that will show you all of the packaging requirements. Now let's get right into it. Now the very first thing that you have to have, let's read this, before sending products to the fulfillment centers, which is where Amazon receives them and scans your packages in, um, it's important to know what is suitable for the fulfillment by Amazon FBA process and what is not. Now I have an entire list of everything that we're gonna cover and the very first thing is any F and SKU you use on a unit must be unique and must correspond to one unique unit or one unique product. For example, each assortment type such as color or size must have a different F and SKU. Now really quickly, if you're unfamiliar with what F and SKUs are, I have an example right here. This is a retagging gun. And so what this F and SKU shows is exactly the unique F and SKU um, numbers and letters and the specific F and SKU description, the new condition and the made in China and exactly what this item is, you can see right there. And so what they're saying is that if you're selling this specific gun right here, this is a retagging gun, if you wanna return stuff, whatever. If you're selling this and you're selling a black version and you're selling a white version, even though you're selling the, the same exact item, they each have to have a unique F and SKU. The same thing if you're selling a phone cover, one is clear and one is um, white or one is black. Each of these items that you're sending into Amazon's fulfillment center have to have different F and SKUs. Now, if you're asking, where do we get F and SKUs from? It's very simple. All we have to do is come to sellercentral.com after we create our actual um, product description in Amazon's platform. They will have a F and SKU that they automatically generate for us. And it's very easy to send that F and SKU, save it in a PDF, send it to your manufacturer in China and have them print it out and put it onto each of the units that you sell. It's very simple. Now, after we have the F and SKU, each of them being unique, the next thing that they show is loose products. Now, when it comes to loose products, Amazon does not want to have two different types of a product that you're trying to sell together, not bundled together. Now, let's read this. Amazon does not accept units that will require Amazon to assemble multiple products. For example, wheelbarrows where the handles and legs are separate, but sold as one piece. So let's say if you're selling a wheelbarrow and legs and you're selling them as one piece, but you have them separated. Amazon doesn't want to get these units individually and have to figure out, okay, now we have to bundle this. If they're sold as a set, you need to have them together, bubble wrapped or in a box together to where it's very obvious and you need to have a label that says do not separate. Now, if we scroll further down, the, exactly what I'm saying is going to be this label right here. This is a set, do not separate. So you have to have each of these units inside a same box if it's sold as a set. And you need to have on it in a bright pink paper is what they recommend, sticky paper. This is a set, do not separate. So it's very obvious exactly what you're selling in this as a set. Now, further on, sold as a set. Units that are sets, such as a set of six, um, like they have right here, um, must be marked as a set on their packaging. So exactly what I just said, if you're selling multiple items in a single bundle, you cannot send in this item, send in this item, and expect Amazon to do your work. You have to have them in a box together and have a, this is sold as a set um, labeling on it. Now those are the first two things. The next one is box units. So this is specifically all boxes must have six sides. Now they also say boxes must have openings or a lid that is not easily opening that's not easily openable on its own. So if it, if it easily opens up, you have to tape it shut and so that it can be either taped, glued, they have right here, or even stapled to keep it closed because once again, if the items fall out and you lose your items, that's on you now on Amazon. Now also, 
must not collapse when medium pressure is applied to any of the sides, meaning that you need to have sturdy boxes. When you have your manufacturer box your items, make sure that your boxes are very durable, um, extra durable. And so this is gonna be something that he's used to doing. And so once again, this is not an issue unless you go cheap on boxes. And yeah, don't go cheap on boxes. Now, the next thing is if a box has perforated sides, as we can see right here in this picture. Now, what does that even mean? So right here, we have a sandwich box that has perforated sides. And as you can see there, that there are little slits that allow you to open this box very easily. And you can also see it has perforated sides right here, the slit, the slit, and the slit. And now they're saying if a box has perforated sides, it must be able to withstand a three foot drop test. Like right here, if you drop it. And if that drop, if it opens up in any way, shape or form, then you need to do further steps, which are going to be, if the product does not pass the three foot drop test, it must be placed in a poly bag with a suffocation warning. Now, what exactly is a poly bag? It is a simple um, clear bag. I don't have it right in front of me, but basically it's a clear plastic bag. And on that clear plastic bag, like right here, let's say this is a poly bag. This is a poly bag on the clear plastic bag. It must have a suffocation warning. So it's a five inch warning that's going to have a suffocation label right here. I'll post it right here. It is an essential suffocation warning that you need to have on your bag in case little kids or anybody um, suffocates on your bag and they die. Now, if you scroll further down, we can see that the poly bag, you, let's say yes, you wanna actually have your products in a cheap poly bag, which may or may not be recommended depending on your product. For some products, it might be okay, but for most products that are bigger, that are a little bit more bulky, that have a little bit more value to them, you wouldn't be poly bagging it. But if you're selling a very cheap and expensive product, then poly bags may be the way to go. And so poly bags with a, poly bags with a five inch opening or larger when measured flat must have a suffocation warning. So once again, when measured flat, if it has a five inch opening or larger, um, so like say, let's say it's five inches, you have to have a suffocation warning across the five inch when flat, right here it's flat. And so we have to have a suffocation warning right here that's saying that once again, do not swallow, do not be aware because you can suffocate on this bag for little kids. Now, it needs to be either printed on the bag or attached as a label. So you can do a sticker or you can have it you know, laser printer on the bag. Obviously stickers are gonna be a lot easier, but once again, you need to have that if you don't wanna be liable in case anyone accidentally chokes on your bag. We, we also have additional poly bag um, measurements and specific requirements that you have to have. So if you're doing a poly bag, make sure to come to this specific list and look at this specifically. Now, the next thing that we have is bubble wrap. Now, products that need to be bubble wrapped would be such as a glass mug or anything that's very sensitive and that if you drop it, it will break. I'm not gonna do it here because for obvious reasons, but once again, you have to have the product bubble wrapped and they say that the bubble wrap cannot fall out. And so you should, and so you should secure it after the bubble wrap. You should, you should, I can't say it. You should secure it with a piece of tape so that the bubble wrap does not come off of the item itself. And so that once Amazon gets it, they don't have to worry about um, items breaking and items be broken and bubble wrap having to retape it. They want it to be very simple on their part. So if you have any bubble wrap items, make sure that it is secured. Now also, it needs to be labeled with a scannable barcode on the outside. Now this is where it can get tricky. So if you have bubble wrap, let's say it's bubble wrapped on the outside of the bubble wrap, you need to have your F and SKU barcode scannable. And so you wanna make sure that you're doing that in a way that's actually able to be scannable by Amazon when they get it. And the last thing to take note in is if you do bubble wrap an item such as a glass mug, it needs to be able to pass a three foot drop test because Amazon will be throwing packages left and right and scanning them and throwing them. And so if it does not pass a three foot drop test, then you wanna be making sure that it does because your items could be getting broken or whatever else. Now, the next requirement that Amazon may require your items to be done in is in an overbox fashion. So overboxing, what does this mean? This means that you sell an item that is either sharp, fragile, hazardous, or vinyl records that needs to be a box inside of a box. So for the iPhone, obviously this is not, um, fall under that category, but if it is sharp, fragile, hazardous, or vinyl, this box needs to be inside of another box so that um, when Amazon gets it and when people get it, um, that they don't get hurt, that the workers don't get hurt, that people don't get hurt because you have a sharp, fragile, hazardous, or whatever type of item. It needs to be double boxed. Now, the next thing that I recommend is for you to smash the like button if you're liking this video or learning anything new. Okay, now we have case pack products. Now, this is where most Amazon FBA sellers will fall underneath. It's basically when you have a single item that you're selling, and so your manufacturer in China will package all of these single items. Let's say you're selling 100 phone cases. For example, and let's say he splits it up into 10 boxes. So each box that he sends in has 10 phone cases. He's gonna put each of the phone cases into these boxes. And so when Amazon gets these boxes, all of the 
all of the items are the exact same. And if we were to scroll down, we have the case packed products and the individual packed products. These are going to be the case packed products, meaning that all of the items that you're sending into Amazon are going to be the exact same. Now, with that being said, there are specific things that we need to do and follow by when we're sending in our case pack products to Amazon. Now, the very first one is that all the products in the box must have a matching SKU and condition, meaning that they all need to be the same item and they all need to be in the new condition, most likely, unless it's only used product, but they're all gonna be the same item, matching SKU and being the new condition and have been packed together by the manufacturer. Now, all boxes with the same product must contain equal quantities of that product in each box. For example, a case pack of 24 units must always contain 24 units. The next thing is that the limit per case packed items is 150, as you see right here. Note that Amazon is only going to scan one unit from the box because there's no need to scan every unit because they are all the same. Now the last category is the expiration dates. And now this is going to be for products that are perishable or consumable or topical products that expire. And so abide by this, but I don't really recommend that as your first product that you're selling foods or any you know topical products unless you really, really are into it. But there are much easier things to get around because you have to imagine that your products expire and they have expiration dates. So if you have longer lead times or shipments get behind or something, it's just gonna be another variable that you have to account for and that can easily you know, mess up your margins if you're selling or if you get behind and you have to sell expired products or you have to just ditch expired products or it's just a whole mess. So you wanna be making sure you wanna be making sure that you're actually selling products that do not expire unless you absolutely have to. And now that brings us to the very end after expiration dates, we have a couple of um, packaging and prep requirements for specific items such as liquids, pallets, glass, batteries, plus sharp units, jewelry, X, Y, and Z. These are gonna be more specific. And so if you have these specific items, once again, make sure you come to this link and you click on these individually and look at those products on your own. Now, once we understand what these specific Amazon FBA requirements are for our different product that we're trying to sell, which brings us to the second thing, which are exactly how we're going to get our product packaged. Now, if you don't know exactly how your product is going to be packaged and exactly what it's going to be packaged, should you use a poly bag, should you use a box, should you use a mesh bag, what exactly you should use, it's very, very simple. We wanna simply go to our manufacturer. If we haven't contacted manufacturers that are already in this process, then we're, uh, what we need to do is go to Alibaba, contact 20 to 30 manufacturers. I have a whole video on that specifically. But once you know the exact manufacturer you're trying to work with, you need to simply ask him, what do you normally package this item with? And specifically, what are the specific and what are the different packaging options that you offer? Do you offer a box? Do you offer a mesh bag? Do you offer a poly bag? Figure out exactly what he offers packaging, what is going to be the most cost effective, but still having the highest amount of perceived value for you. Um, if it doesn't eat into your margins too much and you want to go with the best potential um, packaging option. And so with that, he's going to have a specific way. And so it's very easy to figure out exactly what different options you have as packaging and figure out exactly what you should be using. Now, once you figure out the exact packaging that he's going to provide for you, and let's say we have a box, for example. Now, let's say we want to do a box. And so the box that he's going to send us is just going to be a plain white box or a plain cardboard box or a plain black box. Doesn't matter. Let's say that we want to go above and beyond and we're not happy with this plain box. And so the next step that we want to do, if you want to actually get a box design, which once again is optional and would and would actually, you know, increase the perceived value, but once again, it is optional, you can easily get a specific design template created. Now, how do we do this? Step number one, we need to ask him for the exact packaging template or packaging blueprint or packaging template PDF, whatever it's whatever you want to call it, he's going to know exactly what you're talking about. And so ask him for this. And for a quick example, let's say that he sends us this. It's basically going to be in some shape or form this type of uh, document that he sends you. Now with this document, this is going to be exactly what your product looks like when it's completely laid flat. So when you lay it flat, it has the one, two, three, four sides, the top, the bottom, and then all the pieces that allow it to be closed and that will eventually get you to this um, specific design once you have it finished. Now with this, we can go to Fiverr, we can go to outlinematic.com. I can quickly show you guys. Once again, if we go to outlinematic.com, 
and if we go to Fiverr, there's going to be a ton of different graphic designer options that we can actually get our, our specific packages created with. And so once again, we have, this looks kind of familiar, right? We have a packaging template that is actually created, that's fully done. And once again, you're basically going to just go to pricing and basically pick a package option. We have different prices, but once again, you're going to send them the specific template that your manufacturer sends you and you're, need, and you're going to need to have to give them specific, you know, um, colors that you want, specific things you want to have on your packaging. You can give them examples of maybe some competitors who you think have done a great job for your packaging and exactly give them an idea of what they want to create for you so that you don't just get something super random. Now we have Fiverr option. Once again, it's gonna be a couple hundred bucks. I mean, this is the Allymatic option, but we can also go to Fiverr and do the exact same thing. We just wanna type in, um, once it loads, packaging, packaging, um, design, whatever you, want, whatever you want to type in, you're going to get the same results. And you have, you're going to have a bunch of different people who do the exact same thing on Fiverr. So you can scroll through these. I recommend working with at least level two seller or a top rated seller. But once again, you want to get your package designed professionally if you choose so. Now to be clear, this is not in any way, shape or form necessary, but yes, it does increase your, per your perceived value and it will actually allow the customer to maybe get you more clicks and maybe click on yours because you have amazing packaging along with the first product picture and the first product, in the first product picture you have the first product and the packaging. So yes, it could get you more clicks and ultimately get more people in the door. But once again, it is not necessary and you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Step number three, when we're actually getting our manufacturer from China to send our products to US, we have customs that are going to be checking our products and making sure that there's no um, paraphernalia or drugs or anything else that is not supposed to be on our packaging. So there are specific things that you have to have in your boxes or on your boxes to have the best chances of getting past customs and not the best chances, but actually getting past customs. If you have these things on your boxes, you will get past customs and it will make your job a lot easier. Now, every single unit, every single box, every single packaging that you have that's coming into the US needs the following on the box. Now, the very first thing that you need to have is the made in origin or the made in China or made in, I don't know, India, Pakistan, wherever your products are coming from, you need to have where it's made at, where the country of origin is, so that once it gets on customs, they know exactly where it's coming from and they can move you on into the next step. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can either have it actually printed on your box or on your packaging, but if you have like a poly bag or you know a mesh packaging or something that is not allowing you to have it printed on, um, that's very simple. All you have to do is have it on the F and SKU. Once again, if we look right here, we have the F and SKU and we have right here, made in China. Very simple, very easy. And once again, to access the F and SKU, you go to Seller Central, you wanna get the PDF, send it to your manufacturer via email, have him slap them on every single box so that when they're coming in, they already have made in China on it. The next thing is you need to have the importer or the manufacturer or the brand name. In this case, the manufacturer is actually you. It's not your manufacturer in China. Since you are private labeling these products, you are the brand, you are the manufacturer, you are the creator. So as long as you have your brand logo on the packaging, you have exactly who the, who, who the manufacturer and who the owner of the products are. And the last and final thing that you need to have on each box is exactly what's inside of the boxes. Now, once we know the exact packages we want to use for our product, we understand all of the packaging requirements and we're using these requirements to make sure our products are abiding by them. And we have all these stuff on our specific packaging that allows us to get our packages past customs. Now we can simply have our manufacturer send all of our units into Amazon Fulfillment Center. This is very simple. You go to Seller Central and you create a shipping plan. I will have a very simple and easy to follow future video on exactly how to do this, but it's very simple. You basically just want to put in how many you're sending in, how many boxes or pallets, and exactly where the end destination is going to be. And Amazon gives you these specific fulfillment centers that they want you to send it in anyway. So it's a very simple process. So once you have all of these things, you can easily send your units into Amazon. Now, one more thing to note is that even if you do specific packaging, let's say you do custom packing that's super nice, or you just do whatever packaging that your manufacturer has you do, and you simply have your logo printed on that packaging, even when you're sending your units out to the end customer, once you get a sale, they're in Amazon Fulfillment Center, they pick your product up, they are going to repackage it and send it out to the end customer. Now, for example, we have two different options. We either have 
the padded envelope or we have the Amazon FBA boxes. Now, with that being said, let's say I ordered this package, which I actually just did. It's, it's a simple twine rope. I need some, to pick some stuff up, but regardless, the padded envelope is how this packaging comes in. Even though they have their own specific product packaging, it still comes in a padded envelope or once again, in an Amazon Prime box. So that's something to note, even when you do have your specific packaging and your brand private label business on your um, specific packaging, it still is going to come in either a padded envelope or in an, a specific Amazon FBA box. Now, if you made it this far in the video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe down below because I release multiple step-by-step -step videos showing you exactly how to sell on amazon.com. And with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.